did you identify as the protagonist and antagonist of our two plays? The answer to these questions are firmly grounded in the structure of the linear plot. We can identify the antagonist and protagonist of our plays by identifying the main crisis and climax of the play. So how do we identify these crucial points of plot structure? As we said, the sustained action that follows the inciting incident is a series of crises which lead to a main crisis, which occurs toward the end of the play. We can identify the main crisis as the individual action performed by the antagonist, which forces the protagonist on a one-way path to the climax of the play. Naturally, since the main crisis is defined by the climax of the play, we can identify where the main crisis occurs in Master Harold and the Boys and Romeo and Juliet by identifying where the climax of these plays occur. Let's start by defining what the climax of the play is and describing its important role in the linear plot. The climax of any linear plot can be identified as the individual action performed by the protagonist which represents the complete change that he or she must go through in order for the dramatic reversal to occur. The dramatic reversal is the moment where the protagonist's attitude and or situation changes completely from where it was at the beginning of the play. The climax represents the high point of action in the linear plot. It is the point of no return for the protagonist. After he or she has performed the individual action that represents the climax of the play, they can no longer return to the status quo. They must adjust and continue. This adjustment, which occurs for the remainder of the play, is the resolution. The individual action that makes up the climax of the play can be said to be the most important dramatic action that the playwright includes in their script. This is because this dramatic action represents the ultimate point or theme that the playwright is trying to share with the audience. Everything else that is in the script, every action, is preparing the audience for the impact of the climax. Who did you identify as the protagonist of Master Harold and the Boys? The answer seems to be in the title, doesn't it? Master Harold is the prominent name in the title and also serves as the play's protagonist. But what individual action performed by Halley is the climax of the play? Which action represents the point of no return for Halley? Which individual action represents a complete change in Halley's attitude and or situation? There can be little doubt that the point in the play where Halley spits in Sam's face represents this point of no return for Halley. Both his situation and attitude change after this. His relationship with Sam and Willie can never return to what it was before this action. He can no longer dismiss his behavior as the ignorance of innocence. He must now accept what he has done and adjust. So where is the main crisis in Master Harold and the Boys? Who is the antagonist of the play? What individual action forces Halley toward this action? This question has yielded many different answers. There are those who identify the second phone call from Halley's mom telling Halley that his father is on the way home is the main crisis. They identify Halley's mother as the antagonist. Others say that it is Halley's dad who is the antagonist and that his conversation with his father forces Halley to take out his frustrations on Sam. Still others identify Sam as the antagonist of the piece. They cite the point where Sam drops his pants and reveals his backside to Halley as the main crisis. There are scholars who believe that a character who serves as important a purpose as the antagonist must be present on stage in order to have the impact necessary to lead to the climax of the play. These would argue that Sam is indeed the antagonist. Go to the next task, reflect on these questions, and respond to what you believe to be the most accurate identification of Master Harold and the Boy's antagonist. There are also discussion questions regarding the plot structure of Romeo and Juliet. Respond to these also and return as we continue to our discussion of the linear plot structure of playwriting.